Hello and welcome to a video where I'm going to talk about this car's very special intercooler system because I am cooling the intake air in this car with the air condition from uh, the car here. I have built a twin turbo system on this car and the air charge is uh, cooled by water to air intercoolers but the water is cooled by an interchiller that is connected to the car's air condition system. The interchiller is behind here, you cannot see anything right now but uh, let's dig into this system, remove the panel, check all the components and actually this system is working really good. I was driving in the street week this summer and I actually won that one I had really low temps uh, on the intake air and I will show some numbers and logs about that. The carbon fiber panels are gone and now we can see the interchiller, the heat exchanger. Or we can almost see the heat exchanger. It is this one. I now have a lot of other things here like the fuel filter here for example. But here is the heat exchanger. So this one have the intercooler water in it and it also have refrigerant from the air conditioner system. We can also see here this one is the water tank that, that carries this uh, intercooler water. Uh, I have an extra heat shield actually here to keep the heat from the engine uh, to the interchiller uh, away there. And the idea for this with cooling with air condition I actually had for several years. Uh, I wanted to put it into a car and I checked uh, investigating the Teslas for example, the electrical cars. They have uh, a similar system. They have a coolant that uh, cools the batteries and uh, also the electric motors. And the coolant is cooled by the car's um, air conditioning system. So they have uh, similar heat exchangers, or a little bit smaller ones, so I was maybe planning to buy several of them to put in series. And they also have some uh, super bottle and some other cool stuff. But then I found out a company in uh, Australia forced induction interchillers that made universal kits with this. So I actually bought one of those to save some time and, uh, and bought some really proven stuff. So yeah, this kit is from them, Force Induction into Schiller. Actually, if you want to check them out and want to buy this system, you can use the coupon code BJORK, B-J-O-R-C-K, and you will actually get some discount. This whole um, interchiller has some insulation on it here to keep uh, some yeah, heat out of it and, uh, and keep some condensation away. Also the lines here, they are insulated so uh, it will not be any water uh, coming on there, condensation. So it's not the nicest looking thing but uh, usually you keep it somewhere away on the side or in the front of the engine. Some engines have actually water intercoolers uh, original like the Mercedes and some different cars. So then you can just install this um, to the original system of the car. And the interchiller has four ports, two for the water and two for the refrigerant. And it actually have one expansion valve here as well. So let's see how this is connected into the system. And here we have the original air conditioning system as it looks in almost every car with air conditioning I think. You're actually putting two T's into the system. So this one is parallel, the interchiller, to the original uh, evaporator. And you're also connecting one of these solenoids. These solenoids is uh, making that you can actually close the car's air conditioning system and take all the um, refrigerant to the interchiller so you have maximum efficiency even though i have been running both the car and the interchiller with very good results uh, uh, together you have some high pressure out of the condenser that goes to the interchiller on t and here you have also the solenoid that's included in the kit that makes it possible to close the car but uh, this one is going into the system, to the expansion valve. The interchiller has its own expansion valve. After the interchiller, it goes return to the compressor. So in this car, the compressor is uh, in, on the engine in the back of the car. So it was a very short um, line from the interchiller down to a T. I actually welded on, on the aluminium fitting there, one fitting and uh, installed it. There's also some clamps in this kit, so you can uh, run the hoses and uh, with a special tool you're making your own air conditioned hoses. Worked really good actually. Here we can see where I connected the system in the front here. 
just cut this pipe and uh, welded on one of these fittings that was included in the kit and uh, just some of these clamps here to the rubber hose and from this one it's going to T um, where the interchiller is connected as well and also the original system of the car where it comes from the condensers the condensers is on the side here and on this car I was actually using the stage 2 system that the, the forced induction interchiller is selling there are some special things in this kit uh, stage 2 that makes it uh, much better uh, but uh, it's a secret, trade secret so I'm not allowed to talk about it in the video but if you buy that it will actually be a little bit better and uh, because I was in Abu Dhabi at the time where it's very hot uh, it's very recommended with this stage 2 even though that's a universal uh, thing so I could not use it exactly as it uh, was so I had to modify it also in the car when you're driving you don't have to do anything at all really uh, just have the air conditioning auto and uh, it will work and cool the cool the charger and also here on this panel I have this one for the um, solenoid that one makes uh, that one closes the air condition into the car so everything goes to the interfiller but as I told I have never used it really I just tested it but uh, still if I have a uh, normal air conditioning in here the intake air gets really cold but if you want to take maximum power out of it you can do that one and uh, then you have the air condition on and you put it on maximum cold and uh, close it here. Many, if not all of the Audi R8s and Huracans with the twin turbo, they have an ice box here in the front, like the drag racing cars have. And uh, that's not something I want. I want to have this uh, place for luggage. And I also see this. It's an effective way to put some ice in the system. And um, but it's not like a street car, I think. Um, you have to take the water out of the system with some cups or pump or something and uh, then you have to bring ice and have it. So yeah, many use it. I think all of the guys in the US are using that one. And yeah, it's a good system. I've seen that in Sweden as well. But this cooling system I have is more like a drive and just drive. You can just use it like a normal street car. And also when you're in the lineup before you're drag racing, you can have the air condition uh, going and uh, cooling the system. I have the water tank inside of here. So I made this possible to um, be able to put ice in it, but uh, I have never done it and I think I will never do it. The bigger tank you have, the more you can build up with the cooled water, so it will last for a longer time. I think this system is maybe not the best if you're driving on a circuit track, lap after lap. Then uh, it will maybe not be the best one because the air conditioning kicks out on full throttle, for example. But uh, I think I have about 20 liters of water in this one. My plan is to drive this car, uh, test it on the circuit track like Mantorp for example and it would be interesting to see how many laps uh, it's possible to drive this car without uh, intercooler water getting too hot. Okay, this car has not been driven since street week. It's 11 degrees outside and uh, we have an intake air temp 5 degrees, minus 5 degrees actually. Yep, so it's really cold. Normal in Sweden. We don't see this condensation ice forming on the intercoolers, but uh, it's very humid today, a lot of rain, so it's actually forming some ice. That's a little bit cool. One uh, negative thing is that it can be condensation on the intercoolers and on the pipes. So all the piping, as much as possible, it's good to insulate or have them in rubber. Um, Usually in Sweden these are all dry, it's not so humid in the air, but in some other countries where it's hum very humid it can, these can become uh, wet. And uh, if you're driving on a drag strip it's not good if that falls on the drag strip, so bear in mind with that. Maybe you have to put some insulation on here. The good thing about this is that under these I have a plate, and this one is a heat insulation between the exhaust and uh, the intercoolers so all water that drips down here on this plate it will evaporate really fast actually and not go on the, the back there okay here we can see when i'm starting up the car we have uh, 37 degrees 
uh, everything is in Celsius here. So yeah, that's quite hot. And then when idling and uh, going forward here, I think to the uh, drag strip. And here we do a burnout, we have nine degrees. So yeah, not that cold yet. We do a burnout and then I think uh, it gets a little bit colder, 4.7, maybe when the car is rolling, get some air to the um, condensers. And uh, here we're gonna start, we have 4.5 degrees in the start of a pass. It actually goes down a little bit, 3.1. And then in the end of the pass, we are on the fifth gear, 183 kilometers per hour, we have 15 degrees, and then it gets colder again. So maximum 15 degrees, and this is the inlet air temperature. So it's actually not the um, uh, temperature of the water, the water is cooler. So yeah, I think really effective. And as a comparison, I have a, a friend who was driving the same uh, same day here, uh, he had 70 degrees when he was starting. It was uh, pretty heat soaked under the hood. It was a track hawk, so it's a supercharger car. And that one had uh, 50 when he went uh, to the finish line. So yeah, uh, a lot different here. I know some people have put this interchiller into the track hawks as well. Okay, here we have another one. And uh, this day is in Usha, I believe, I think it was, I don't remember, but between 20 and 30 degrees. So it was uh, okay day, and not very hot, but not very cool. And um, we have 6.8 degrees here, we're doing the burnout, and it's actually going down below zero degrees centigrade, minus um, half degree. So just before the start here, uh, this is the burnout, and here is the um, start of the pass. Uh, it was actually only three gears on this one, but yeah, you can see that uh, the temperature here, it's uh, about around zero degrees. Uh, on the first gear here, 0 0.4 degrees. And uh, we have the boost, it's 208 kph, a little bit over one bar boost. So it's still not a lot of boost, uh, uh, but I think this system will hold up good uh, even when I'm carrying out uh, more boost on this car. Uh, the top temperature here is 11 degrees approximately, then it becomes cooler again. There were some problems on this pass, so I let off, off the third gear, I think. So, so far, this system has very good potential, I think. We can see here on some startups, uh, the intake air temperature around 30. And then when the system starts working, it's going down and down. Just in comparison here with my Lamborghini Gallardo Twin Turbo, that also have a watch to intercooler system, but it doesn't have the interchiller system. And before I pass here, we have 40 degrees C uh, in the beginning. The good thing with this uh, water to air intercooler is that um, when you have a really big intercooler so that I have in my cars, uh, the temperature is not rising so quickly. It's uh, a lot of uh, cooled mass in the um, what do you say, in, in the intercooler. So an air intercooler will be hotter much faster. But this one, the thing is, it starts at 40, and we're doing the pass here, I do driving um, 300 kilometers per hour, but uh, 45 is the maximum. So yeah, just a couple of degrees um, going up here, but uh, the thing is, it's 40 in the beginning. So I think it will help a lot with the air density, uh, with the cooler air, and um, you can have uh, a little bit extra timing and the uh, cooler air means more density and it means that uh, more power actually. And when talking inlet air temperature is these sensors here. I have uh, on the inlet the pipe here going away from the intercooler. So that's measuring the air. I have actually put a temp sensor here, coolant sensor for the, the, yeah, the intercooler water. The, the intercooler coolant, but I have forgot to configure that one into the ECU. It would be interesting to see how cold the water is as well. But the main thing is, of course, the intake air. Also, remember, if you want to buy a system from forced induction interchillers, you can use the coupon code Bjork, B-J-O-R-C-K. And these are the universal systems uh, that can fit uh, all turbo cars that use actually the um, water to air intercoolers. And yeah, you need to have an air conditioning system in the car as well. So for now, I'm really happy with this uh, interchiller system and uh, I've not put it to the edges yet, but I think it will hold good even if I put a lot more power in this uh, car. 
Otherwise, I still have problem with registration here in Sweden. Uh, I think where everything is now is that the insurance company in Canada, Economical Insurance, uh, a lady called Anikter, um, do not want to talk with me. Uh, responsible, she's responsible of uh, this case and uh, nobody at the insurance company want to talk with me because they say they are doing their investigation even though I have a lot of information. So if you know anybody at uh, Economical Insurance in Canada, Montreal, Quebec that can maybe help me there, um, please let me know. Uh, they have the title in their hand now even though I bought the car so yeah we will see. I want to begin to modify this car a little bit more now and uh, yeah do some preparation for next year's races. Thank you for watching, see you later!